Hello guys, welcome to the video, hope you're well. Okay guys, so uh, we've just had the campfire chat yesterday with Diablo 4, Dev Team, and bloody old guys, absolutely loads of changes, loads of good stuff, and uh, pleasantly surprised, even old style Rifts guys from Diablo 3 are coming back into Diablo 4, known as Pits. So uh, let's go through this, uh, we've got a nice uh, blog post here from Wow, how well had, thanks so much for the summary, let's go through it guys. And also Diablo PTR, for those that know guys, PTR stands for Public Test Realm, it's a test server, only on PC at the moment, but they did say in the future there will be one for console as well. Okay, so um, let's have a look guys, ba -ba 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 -ba. right, these are all the changes, my god, there's absolutely loads there. So we've got PTR, optimization, base items, additional updates, codex of power change, that's a big one, tempering guys. Which is, sounds very, very similar to uh, <laughs> last epoch uh, crafting, guys. Uh, uh, Great your fixes as well. Master working. Class updates for the classes. In-game hell tide change, which is really nice. Boss ladder updates as well. Some Q&A. So let's go for this. Well, then, guys. So PTR phase size starts on April the 2nd. Okay? For one week until the April the 9th. Okay? The season of the contract, the current season, the guys, will end... On uh, we'll begin on the main of the four team, okay. Season coach will end on the season four start. We're on the main of the four team, so they're extending it out a little bit to make time for us to test these things on the PTR and uh, bring back feedback. Hopefully, find game crushing bugs that we can fix and have a nice smooth launch. You know, PTRs only available to Battle.net users on PC, and future PTRs will be available by plan for like console guys eventually in the future. Okay, well, then, guys, so um, if you go onto the test server. You'll be basically super boosted. You can instantly boost to 100. You get tons of gold, campaign completion, mount, skill points, everything. So you don't have to grind your character up on the test server. You'll be maxed out straight away. You can go straight in and try out all the new stuff, which is good. Lovely. You'll be able to test out skill points, paragon points, fog of war clearing, auto lilith points, random set of set gear, class mechanics, all paragon glyphs unlocked, and legendary. So basically, you just get absolutely everything on the test server. Okay. And uh, it, this does not carry over to the live season, obviously, okay? Because it's just for testing purposes. Lovely, guys. Right, so the optimization rework, okay? So, guys, the way the optimization works currently in live, it's okay, you know? It wasn't really that deep. Oh, that doesn't really feel that meaningful. So what they've done, guys, they made it so few pieces of loot would now drop, but overall loot would now be higher quality. This is nice. That way you're not just flooded with loads of crap all the time. It's much, much easier now to... Find what you're looking for, sort of thing. The goal will be for players to be able to craft and customize their ideal gear. Base item updates. Many unused affixes will be now removed from the game. Okay, so we've seen loads of these affixes before, those really crap ones. So they've just got rid of those now, so gear will now roll better more often, which is nice. Uh, sacred items, guys, will now, will now only appear in World Tier 3 and not in World Tier 4. And ancestral items will now appear in World Tier 4 all the time so no longer guys getting sacred items in world tier 4 anymore which is a great great change good uh the total number of fixes on gear will be reduced okay so now lose one affix guys but those stat ranges are now higher and then with the new crafting system you can basically add new affixes a bit like last, like last epoch uh, crafting system and um you add more fixes to your gear as you go along sort of thing making it powerful basically exalts from ellie drops legendary and unique items will now be tradable now this is big guys because because the way the gear drops now, it can roll some extra fixes on top. A bit like primals from Diablo 3, in a way. And these items are now tradable, but once you've crafted them, they became locked to your character. So, uh, the trade window is going to be massive now, which is going to be really nice. So, we better trade a lot more gear. A lot more gear. I'm really, really pleased with this chain. I'm an old D2 player. I love trade. And to be able to trade unique and unique items, remember, like, certain stats that are rolled on it and all that, with the new system. I find that very interesting, very, very fun. So, uh, trade boys, let's go. <laughs> great, great change. I love that, man. Base item updates, okay? So, smaller pool of fixes, more relevant potent affixes, ranks of single core skills, only second items in World Tier 3, blah, blah, blah. So, that's that there. Additional updates. Level of 95 plus enemies will now only drop 925 gear because, you know, you only want 925 power gear anyway. So, from level 95, mobs is up. They're always going to drop the 925 loot. So you don't have to keep farming, let's say, Jury all the time to get that 925 loot. Now, that's a good change. The gem system has been simplified, and gems can be sold for more gold. That's nice, actually, because um, it would never sold for that much gold, did they? Uh, item enchanting costs, guys, are now capped. It doesn't go over, like, forever now. It's going to be capped at a certain point. We don't know what the cap is, but there would now will be a gold cap. So if you're trying to roll that gear to a certain point, it's going to be much, much easier now to... Uh, 
to get that role, you know. Many materials have been consolidated and forgotten souls will now have additional sources as well, which is good. Okay. Gem simpler, blah, blah, blah. Uh, salvage crafting and rewards all retuned. Simply reduce your item drop rates. So let's sort in more slaying. Good. Iron Robux Cap, which was talked about that. And blah, blah, blah. Okay, bro. Okay, so uh, more unique items, guys. We're now drop in worlds tiers one and two. Okay, so um, if you've got a build in mind, you can now get those items much easier now. World, world tiers one and two. Get your build going and start rocking and start slaying early, which is kind of nice in a way. Personally, I don't. You know, I personally like a slower grind myself, but, you know, if you want to blast early, you'll be able to, though. Uh, Uber Uniques can now drop in World Tier 3 from level 55 plus enemies, which is absolutely wild. <laughs> so there's a small chance, guys, for Uber Uniques to drop in World Tier 3 now. Crazy. Codex of Power, guys. Now, this is a great change. Now, we always struggle with stash space in Diablo. Okay, especially Diablo 3 and Diablo 4, obviously, with uh, all these aspects in our inventory and our know, backpacks and all that sort of stuff in your stash. So um, they basically got rid of it. Okay, so um, when you uh, destroy a legendary now, it gets that power gets moved to the Codex of Power. Okay, so there's no longer aspects in your inventory or in your stash space. It's a really big win right here. And um, so you've got the maximum power, it goes gold on the border. Okay, so say you got bone splinters, you got bone splinters, so the maximum roll, it go gold, and then you just recraft that as many times as you want onto your gear. So uh, that's really, really nice, man. That's a great, great change. Big win, man. So we get more stash space now, guys, which is great. Max rolled lindry aspects, but only drop in world tier 4, not world tier 3 or 2, by the way, guys. And also salvaging a max rolled aspect will permanently upgrade that aspect to the Codex of Power. You can see it's done it here, and boom, it's in gold. Brilliant, man. That's a great win, man. So more space, guys. And uh, nice, nice and tidy, nice and tidy. Temporary, guys. This is a new crafting thing, okay? Temporary is a new crafting system that allows players to add fixes to gear, okay? This is basically LE crafting, guys, okay? Uh, temporary manuals will drop from most content in the game and cannot be target farmed, okay? So you get these basically manuals that give you a fixes. You can chuck it on your server item, okay? Mans will have four possible fixes, with one of fix being randomly applied to a piece of gear, Okay. Items have a limited tempo durability, so forge potential for melee will determine how many times the tempo can be rolled. So it's very, very similar to the early uh, crafting system, guys. Okay, so if you're playing Last Epoch, then you're probably going to be know what's coming, sort of thing, which is kind of nice, actually. Also, guys, there is greater fixes coming as well. The most powerful fixes rolls in game with a 1.5 multiplier to previous maximum rolls. Greater fixes can only roll on dropped legendary or unique items. Greater fixes can be enchanted off items, but cannot be crafted onto them. Okay, so uh, you get these new fixes now, and they're much, much stronger. Like, much, much stronger. So, when you're trying to farm a unique item now, or a legendary or something like that, the ranges that you can get this stuff now is going to be much greater. So, the item hunt will now be much, much more fun now. You know, it's not going to be like, oh, I've got that, I've got this uber sword. Now, say you've got grandfather. You just upgrade it in the blacksmith and bang. That's the best it could possibly be. You know, now you could possibly have um, a unique or something like that now that have drops a certain fixes to a certain range, you know? So it's going to be very, very hard now to get that perfect roll now on the item. So there's always going to be that chance that every day you could find an upgrade. I really like that, you know, because there's nothing worse than just gearing out your character and you're like, oh, now what sort of thing. So now you can always try to get something a little bit better every day. So I like that, man. I do, I do like a deep loot hunt, guys, you know what I mean? So that's, I really like that change. It's kind of a bit like Primals, guys, in a way, from uh, from D3, in a way. Uh, hopefully they put, like, a special beam or sink onto the item when it drops with those special fixes when it drops as well, hopefully. Okay, guys, then you've got Masterworking. Masterworking is a new item upgrading system that will include, to include 12 ranks. Every four upgrades, one random fix will be dramatically increased, okay? And I believe you can re-roll this with, with as much mats as you want, I think. Okay? So uh, I believe that's what they said on the dev chat. So yeah, you can do 12 ranks and one random fix will be massively increased, like percent damage or vulnerable or whatever. Okay. So uh, yeah, there's lots and lots of stuff coming into the game. Okay, guys, class updates, yeah? Season 4, we introduced two unique items and one additional Uber Unique, okay? The new Uber Unique is Terriel's Might, okay? Ancestral Unique Chest, all stats, maximum resistance to elements, resistance to all elements. Um, that's quite nice, it's got the maximum resistance, actually. 10% uh, damage reduction as well. While at full life, your skills unleash a divine barrage dealing X damage. 
to uh to mids around so basically it's just nuking like holy stuff it's kind of cool is this like a little uh teaser that there's a pound coming maybe <laughs> who knows guys who knows but yeah there's a new uh uber unique there guys terror man man looks pretty good looks pretty good okay guys so change is a frozen orb uh frozen orb will now travel to where the player directs it okay which is nice so when you cast it now it will explode for instance when you aim your curse it will just explode off screen sort of thing so uh you can actually Hot frozen orb now when you want it to actually explode. Uh, Necromancer, guys, this is a big change. I'm a massive pet player, and I, I want pets to be really good in Diablo 4 because at the moment they're kind of like a uh, bit meh. But this patch will give us a lot more power. So uh, Necromancer and Druid minions now inherit 100% of the character's stats. Uh, that's absolutely massive. Okay, now think about all that main stat from uh, the Paragon Tree and things like that. So hopefully. Pets might be good in season four. <laughs> There's some more changes down below as well. But um, this is just like a brief glimpse, guys, of what we're going to have in season four. They're going to do a proper um, blog post, I believe, next week, where it's going to have the full patch notes. And they said it's going to be absolutely massive. So there's going to be some big changes in there. I'm really hoping that we're going to see some cool stuff, man, in there as well. Oh, nice. And then, guys, so um, meanwhile, class eight, blah, blah, blah. We'll trade that out. Book of the Dead upgrades here. We'll go over that in a second. All right, guys, they change it to Wind and Lasher Aspect. That spawns more Dust Devils now. So the old version, cast and double swing twice within two seconds, creates a Dust Devil that does X damage to enemies behind the target. New version, cast and double swing, creates a Dust Devil that deals X damage to enemies in its path, triple the amount of Dust Devils created if double swing is cast twice within two seconds. So they change some of the aspects down to make them a bit more fun. And obviously, that's quite a nice change. Dust Devils, man, it's always been pretty cool. Lovely. Change the lacerate as well, guys. So, uh, receiving several upgrades. So, before, lacerate heals for 3% maximum life and doubles and crook strikes. And then now, it's like prime lacerate. Uh, heals for 3% maximum life, double or critical strikes. And the first crook strike is guaranteed to deal 150% damage. Okay, so there's a big, big increase. I am worried a little bit about the power creep in this patch. Because even in live now, on season 3, we're pretty much one shot in pretty much everything. Bit worried about power creep, but maybe if they put the power creep in, guys, because there's basically super uber bosses we could fight in season four. Maybe that's why they give us more power, maybe. And we're not too sure, but we'll find out. It's also, guys, getting a unique as well, man, called a Fractured Winter Glass. Okay. Casting Frozen Orb has a 47 to 50% chance to spawn a random conjuration when it explodes. Okay. Your conjurations have an up to. 70 to 100% chance to launch a frozen orb at a nearby enemy <laughs> on lucky hit. So uh, that's pretty cool, actually. It's quite a nice little uh, little companion frozen orb I am there. It's pretty good. Road guys, inner sight has been changed as well. Old inner sight, attack to market enemies, fill up your inner sight gorge when it's full, you gain unlimited energy for four seconds. But I said, you know, you didn't supposed to be able to. Because of, the, because of the current mechanics of the game, we can just basically keep this up forever. So they changed it now, okay. Attacks enemy marked enemies will now fill up your inner sight gorge. Attacking non-marked enemies fill it to 5% of the normal rate. When it's full, gain unlimited energy. And 25% plus critical strike chance for 24 seconds. So that to change it. Right, guys. Necromancer, my favorite. Okay, so Book of the Dead will be in multiple improvements that will benefit the minion builds, okay? So they're really trying to boost up the minions at the moment. And, um, like, Reapers wind up attack, guys. The special attack where Reapers do. Now reduce one of your active cooldowns by three seconds. Now, three seconds is a lot. <laughs> but that attack, I believe, can only go off once every ten seconds, I think. So, um, yeah, they just say they might reduce this a little bit. But that's really, really nice. You know, active cooldowns by three seconds. Bone Storm, guys, you know. That's really, really nice. They've changed Cold Mages as well. Cold Mages attack apply vulnerable for four seconds now. So we could literally just apply all our vulnerable with cold mages now. That's very, very nice. This guy's is really nice. Iron Golem, yeah? Your Iron Golem slam attack also pulls in enemies. Now, it doesn't say how much range or radius it is, but that's very, very nice. <laughs> say you're playing a hybrid build, yeah? So you're playing my Bone King build that I put on the channel up a few times, where it's got Bone Spirit and Pets in. You know, this would be really nice, like pull everything to one spot and blast them with the spears man and then they, if they start running around then cast tendrils and pull them back in again sort of thing so yeah they're bringing some more utility into the pets on the book of the dead so i really like that as well hardcore changes guys the elixir of death evasion will now be permanently removed from the game 
is what it does. For the next 30 minutes, prevent death once and become immune for two seconds. Once it takes place, you cannot benefit from again for five minutes. So they're now removing this permanently from the game because a lot of player base basically want hardcore to be hardcore and stop using this chi item. Also, guys, Flame Shield will now be reworked with a less cheat death mechanic as well. So Flame Shield currently does this, and Flame Shield now automatically activates after communically losing 100 maximum life. It can only happen once every 30 seconds. Okay. End game content, guys. Now, Helltide's changed. I'm not a massive fan of Helltide, but when I saw the gameplay happening on the live uh, campfire chat, I actually thought it looked quite interesting. Helltide, guys, is now available in World Tiers 1 and 2. That's actually quite nice. You can build up your mats and gear while you're leveling up. I actually wouldn't mind leveling up out in the hell tide. It'd be quite nice. Uh, enemy density has been increased. So there's more monsters now. And the threat meter can be filled to summon additional enemies. Now, I saw this on the uh, the little uh, gameplay section they showed yesterday. And basically, as you're killing monsters, you get a threat meter. It's near your map on the top right. And uh, when it fills up, you basically get swarmed by tons of uh, tons of monsters, man. Loads of Helltide monsters, different types of ones and things like that, and leap packs and all that. And um, it just lets you progress through Helltide a lot quicker, and just makes it a bit more fun, basically. Because I think the current Helltide right now is a bit like uh, it's a bit stale, you know. So it's nice that we've got this fret meter that you can build up and get jumped. Hopefully, we see some sort of fret meter guys put in some other situations in the game as well in the future, sort of thing. But um, yeah, it's quite nice, quite a nice little change, man. I do like that, man, a lot, actually. Uh, new content, rare summoning materials drop during the tide. Use to summon the Blood Maiden, a public event boss. Many of the new mini-events, Heartbreakers, keep things fresh. Yes. Because, guys, Andario has now been added to the boss fight ladders, okay? So uh, you can now fight Uber and Dario boss fight. Uber and Dario will have the same loot table as Uber Jurio, so whatever loot Jurio drops currently, guys, you know, Shakos, things like that. And Dario will be dropping that gear as well. And, um... Yeah, it looks good, man. I love Endaria, man. She's cool as hell. I'm glad that she's coming to the game now as a boss that we can repeat farm for loot and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Nice. And uh, some of the parts come from Beast in Ice and Lord Zier guys for Andario. Nice. And uh, that's not too bad. They're, they're quite easy to farm, actually. Brilliant. Especially if you're doing uh, dungeons and all that. Getting the uh, Beast in Ice, uh, you know, the Frozen stuff. Brilliant. Okay, guys. Now, this is uh, basically from Diablo 3. They've called it The Pit. Okay, new endgame content, the pit. Basically, guys, this is refs from Diablo 3. I know, right? It's great. I, I love refs in D3, man. So uh, they've now basically called it the pit, in, and it's going to come in Diablo 4. Um, also, it's um, something a bit like an Iron Man dungeon. I've been asking Blizzard to add Iron Man dungeons to Diablo 3 for, like, for like about 10 years. And... Um, it's now in the game, basically. It's like a multi-tier dungeon that gets harder and harder, sort of thing. Let's read this out quickly. The pit will be where players find master working materials for the new crafting system up above, required for the new crafting system. Sticky and stones will now drop that can be used to summon level 200 uber bosses. So uh, there's now the new versions, guys, of the uber bosses, okay? So super strong uber bosses. They're going to drop much more look. We don't know exactly what they're going to drop yet. We'll probably find out in the, in the next blog post and all that. But there's now going to be super, super strong versions of the Uber Boss guys. Level 200. <laughs> Crazy. Sticking stones start dropping it in the pit. These stones are used to summon level 200 version of each boss. Ladder boss. We are making it easy to acquire ladder boss materials generally. So they would now drop a bit more off in, in the world from events and monsters and things like that. Which is much, much nicer. Brilliant, man. So yeah, guys, yeah, the pit, man. It's, like, it's basically like a multi-tier dungeon. And... Um, when you want to quit, you basically get the materials and all that sort of stuff. But it's got like multiple levels. It gets harder and harder as you go deeper into the pit. Love that. It's, it, we've already seen this before in Grim Dawn and some other games, but they're finally added to the uh, to the Apple Four. Brip, absolutely fantastic. Nice. And then we've got a little bit of Q and A that was asked during the live stream. We'll read this out as well. Um, all items that are currently on the Eternal Realm will be flagged as legacy items that cannot be modified by Temperance and Masterworking. Uh, everything announced today will be included both seasonal and external realms, guys. So seasonal and non-seasonal. Masterworking will increase all the effects on a piece of gear by a small amount. In season four, the camera will can zoom out further. Oh my god! <laughs> right, guys. So currently on Live Diablo Four, no corpse bows and stuff like that, and those monsters that just teleport on top of you and kill you, one shot you. You can now see them, okay? So by default, the camera will be set to how it's good as, as it currently is now. But in season four, guys, when it comes out, you can actually zoom the camera out. So you can actually see what's going around you now. You should be getting shot by corpse bows and jumped on your head now by monsters outside your right line of vision. 
Thank God. Don't know how, how much it zooms out. Hopefully it's the same zoom as when you're on your horse. Big win. Big win, win Ben. Obviously this will affect performance of FPS, but it wouldn't affect it that much, guys, in my opinion. Brent, uh, the armory and loadouts will be implemented at some point in the future, guys. You can change your builds like Diablo 3, but there's nothing to announce today at the moment. Additional skill points and paragon points could be coming with the new expansion. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, I believe that's coming out in June, July, guys, I think. Uh, since the drop rate of items will be decreasing, there will be a, not a loot filter added to the game currently. So they're not going to add a loot filter just yet, but because they're decreasing the amount of the stuff that's dropping, they're just giving us basically, you know, better rolls in the gear. They got rid of, like we said earlier, they got rid of the really bad fixes that generally come into loot currently sort of thing. So uh, that's a nice change. Items with greater affixes could drop with a new icon. I hope so, because otherwise, you know, I want to know when a greater affix item drops, especially if it's a unique, you know. So, um, depending on the player, people, a hundred percent, guys, should we should have a new icon, you know, for the, the greater affix gear. So basically, primal versions of the gear, you know. Uh, as player progress deeper into the pit, the item level will remain at nine hundred twenty-five, but items will drop more frequently. Nice. Uh, players were able to enter the pit as a party, guys. It's not a solo thing. You can go into the pit in four players. I really, really hope that the pit has a leaderboard. Okay? So, uh, I think it's a perfect time, man. So, uh, just slap a leaderboard, Blizz, if you guys have got the time to do it. If not, maybe do it for Season 5. But, um... I think a leaderboard for the pit would be a great, great idea. Challenge Rifts... Well, Challenge Rifts, aka The Gauntlet, hasn't hit that home that much with the players, in my opinion. I'm not a massive, it's basically just challenge riffs from Diablo 3 with some chests inside it, okay? And with some static map, you know? I always preferred the D3 pushing system where it's like random maps like the pit, you know? If you guys could chuck a leaderboard onto the pit, that would be an absolute huge win for Season 4 if you can make it do it in time. I would love that. Uh, there are plans for social updates, guys, uh, including a clan rework and player matchmaking. However, these changes will not be implemented as part of Season 4. I'm a clan leader in my current clan. And I've got no idea how long a player has been AFK in the clan. I really need to know this information. We had this in Diablo 3. Uh, always have a you know 14 day policy where I remove someone from the clan if they're unactive because they've got a lot of other people that want to join. So we really need this stuff in soon, hopefully. Hopefully for Season 5. Uh, cosmetic portals no longer be class locked now as well. That's cool. Uh, no new content and banish changes are planned for PvP yet. Uh, and uniques and uber uniques can roll greater affixes, guys. Now, this is cool, man. Okay, so when you're doing your... Uh, when you're getting you're doing your big grind for your uber uniques, say grandfather, they can roll the greater affixes as well. So you could find a, basically a primal grandfather, aka okay, greater affix grandfather, for instance. So uh, it would keep, you, keep that nice uh, loot hunt nice and fresh and like always want to log in and try to find that gear i like this a lot i don't want to just get my gear straight away and be bored in the first week of launch so um always a reason to log in find that sweet link nice and also guys the codex of power will be shared between all characters on the same account and realm type as well so uh you can just use it for your characters it is separate though between hardcore and softcore and there you go guys that is the roundup from wowhead what a lovely little roundup as well what do you guys think about these changes there's actually no information yet about season four's content got no idea that's coming a bit later but um so far guys these changes look absolutely great obviously this crafting is basically from <laughs> the last epoch pretty much their version which is great i'm quite happy it's in the game personally i love the last epoch's crafting system so I'm glad it's in the d4 but yeah it's looking much much better guys much more special i'm really looking forward to doing the pit and going to smash out all that all that sweet sweet loot thanks for watching guys subscribe for more and i'll put the link to this uh this post in the description of the video thanks for watching guys good things coming ahead thanks man ggs well done blitz lovely <laughs>